Welcome to Tech Talks with Maslow Technology. Today's subject, new meter startup and troubleshooting. Hi, welcome to Maslow Technology. I'm Claude Nowlin. Today we're going to look at, at some of the uh, troubleshooting principles that we might consider in, in starting up a new meter or even in uh, trying to figure out what's wrong with a meter that's not working the way we'd like it to do. Today we're going to use a, a um, Coriolis mass flow meter. This, this particular one is a micro motion. We have an element here sitting in line. We have a transmitter over here. One of the first things that we need to do, especially in a, in a new installation or reinstallation, such as after a turnaround, is to check and make sure that we've got the meter in correctly. Now that means that we have to know which direction the flow is going, which direction the process flow is, is going. We also need to look at the uh, direction that the meter considers normal flow. Usually there's an arrow either on the element itself or sometimes if there's a, um, uh, an integrally mounted transmitter in the transition between the transmitter and the element, there'll be an arrow indicating normal flow. Uh, on this particular one, the arrow is on the back side of this transition piece and it's pointing in this direction. Our normal flow when the system is running is in this direction, so we're in good shape here. The other thing we need to look at is in the configuration. Most modern day transmitters will allow you to configure your, your, your flow meter to measure either in the forward or in the reverse or in both directions. So in this case, we need to know how we're going to use the meter and that it also is configured correctly. Uh, secondly, in the installation, sometimes we put a, a stress through the flanges. When the meter is initially installed, we need to make sure that the flange alignment the, on the mating flanges is correct. We don't want to have an offset or a mismatch here because then when we tighten up the bolts, it's going to put stress into the element that stress will be transferred down to the measuring tubes and it will cause an inaccuracy in the flow measurement. Uh, next, this is a basic thing but the wiring. It's very important. This particular flow element uh, takes nine wires to connect it to the, to the transmitter. Most of the time the wires are going to be color coded which makes it a lot easier. And if you can see on this one, we simply match uh, each color of the wire to the same color of the wire on the other side of the terminal. And then the field cable goes into the transmitter. Here again, we have to make sure that our uh, element is hooked up to the transmitter correctly. Not only in that the wires are going to the correct terminals, but in this case we have two, two, uh, two plugs, so they have to be installed in the correct position. Uh, we need to look at our output wiring as well. If we're going to be using a frequency output, an analog output, or both, we need to make sure that the correct wire is hooked up to that output on the transmitter. Some meters, the Coriolis in particular, some of the designs have an elongated tube. In this case, the flow is diverted into two tubes that take a U-shape. Now the positioning of the tube is important here relative to the properties of our process. If we're going to be measuring a liquid process, we always want to install this type of flow meter so that the tubes are down. Therefore, uh, gravity will keep the tubes full of liquid. If we're going to measure a gas, then we want to put the tubes up so that gravity will then keep any condensate out of the tubes. This type of flow measurement requires that the tubes be balanced and that means that the process also has to be balanced. Uh, a, good, a good reference for that is, is in the uh, manufacturer's manual, in the installation guide and the manufacturer's manual. After the installation is correct, after our bolt, bolts are tight, we have integrity in the pipe, then we start uh, flowing usually water in the beginning to check for leaks. 
then we, we go to, to a process, whatever our process is that we're measuring. The next step that we need to take is to purge the flow line and the flow meter. If this is a liquid process, then we need to run enough of the liquid process at a high enough velocity to drive the air out of the element and to drive all of the air or all of the gases out of the pipe. Once we have purged the flow meter, we can then zero the flow meter. Uh, the process of zeroing, we have it set up here at this time. We, we get the process under operating conditions as close as possible with the process fluid that we're going to use at near process pressure and near process temperature. We block in the flow meter both downstream and upstream. And then different manufacturers have different ways of initiating the zero. What we're going to do is to define a no flow condition. The flow meter will then take that defined condition and use it as a reference during normal flowing operations. On this particular flow meter, we've got a button that we push, hold that button in for a few seconds. The blinking light will stay on. We are now in the, in, in the auto zero process. Uh, this meter is going to take about a minute. During this time, the flow meter is looking at the signals coming from the flow element, comparing those signals as it would during uh, a normal flow condition. It's measuring those signals and it's going to use this as a reference point for actual flowing conditions. We're telling the meter what zero flow looks like so that it will have a reference for future flow measurement. All right, the light has started blinking again. On this meter, a one hertz blinking rate, 25% on, indicates that uh, the flow meter is in good shape and is ready to go. So now we have the flow meter zeroed. We need to configure the flow meter, which is a, a little more of a drawn out process. We use a communicator, a um, smart family interface S SFI 275 or equivalent communicator. We go into a, conf a configuration tree and we set the parameters, the calibration factors, which are on a tag. Again, the tag is on the other side of the sensor here. Uh, but there is a tag on here that gives the calibration constants for flow. It gives the calibration constants for density and uh, in some cases any other parameter that you need to measure. We need to make sure that those constants have been entered into the transmitter in the correct places. We need to make sure that we define our outputs. Are we going to use a frequency output? Are we going to use it in a frequency representing flow? Or are we going to use it in pulses per per unit of measure, pulses per pound, pulses per ton. We need to define that in the configuration of the transmitter. We need to enter, the, if we're going to measure density, we have a density calibration factor. If we're going to measure temperature, we need to set up our temperature output span, um, our flow output, our density output, whatever we're going to measure. We also have parameters in here such as uh, damping. We have some low flow cutoffs. That is an individual thing for your process and how you're going to use that flow meter. Once the flow meter is installed, configured, zeroed, then we're ready to, to make a good measurement. Astrotech Laboratories are located in Baytown, Texas and Sulphur, Louisiana. Give them a call at 281-427-7284 or see them on the web at masslowtech.com.